these two groups of people just like leaving you know let's just say like the world or the media and just like okay who are you and why do you feel this way yeah and then they were able to understand each other and be unified so i don't know anybody know what this place is this is gettysburg hello and welcome to cinema therapy i'm jonathan decker i'm a licensed therapist and i love movies I'm Alan Seawright, I am an unlicensed filmmaker, and I desperately need therapy. And this is James Curran, he is a modern day renaissance man. What, what are you? How do you, you do all the things. You do all the things. Yeah, I, um, I'm an entrepreneur, I, I make some music. Let me love you while we listen in the side. I make guacamole, I mean, <laughs> now, what can I not do? I, yeah, that's that's the perfect man right there. Entrepreneur, music maker, makes guacamole. Yeah, yeah I'm man. actually most proud of my guacamole. Really? Of all the things that I've ever done. <laughs> See, and that is terrifying because I love this man's music. I've been listening to it for years. Now I really ought to try the guacamole. So we uh, asked you to come join us for Movies That Changed Me. Mm -hmm. And what is the movie that changed you that you wanted to share with us? Um, it's my favorite movie, which is Remember the Titans. Favorite film. All so, right. yeah, I absolutely love this movie. We're gonna break down some clips and things, but can you give us a little teaser of why it's your favorite film? Like a mission statement, why Remember the Titans is? Yeah, I think it gives everything that is good in movies into one thing. And yeah. then on top of that, it shows um, probably the most important thing for, in my opinion, that can teach humanity, which is if you are willing to get vulnerable and if you're willing to learn about people that you don't understand, you will see them the way that they should be seen, which is equals. Yeah. I mean, I just feel, I feel all the emotions, I feel all the things when I watch this movie and I, I think it teaches so many things. I can't tell you how many times I've watched the news lately and thought, when it's not news, all the networks should have, like, at one time, just remember the Titans, so that our country will just watch Remember the Titans and yeah. kind of figure their <laughs> out. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, man. You smiling? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why are you smiling? Because I love football. Football's fun. Fun, sir. Fun, sir. It's fun. Yes. You sure? I think so. Now you're thinking. First you smile, then you think. You think football is still fun. Yeah. Can Denzel we all for, just have? Can we just have Denzel be the national coach? He should be the national life coach. Yeah. He's just, yeah. That's it. Is no. it fun? No, sir. No. No, sir. Absolutely not. Zero fun, sir. All right. Listen up. I'm Coach Boone. I remember. I think it was like a month ago. I was driving down the street, and on one side was this giant group of of Black Lives Matter, and this other group of Blue Lives Matter, and I just visioned this uh, this movie where one of the beginning scenes is this giant group of people protesting this integration of the school. Yeah. And it, it feels very, very similar to something that was happening in the 60s. And all of it got solved by two groups, these two groups of people just like leaving, you know, let's just say like the world or the media and just like, okay, who are you and why do you feel this way? Yeah. And then they were able to understand each other and be unified, so I don't know. Anybody know what this place is? Is Gettysburg. And it doesn't feel like 50 years ago, is what I, is that, that's what no. I hear you saying. It feels very contemporary. Like this watching is what's this, happening. it yeah. feels like, th this feels like it should be just on the news. Well, we have a, an interesting scene here where they're finally starting to break down some barriers, I believe. All right, man, listen. I'm Gary, you're Julius. Let's get some particulars and just get this over with, all right? Particulars? Yeah. No matter what I tell you, you ain't gonna never know nothing about hey, me. Hey, listen, I ain't running any more of these three days, okay? Well, what I got to say, you really don't want to hear, because honesty ain't too high up on your people priority list, right? You can't run over everybody in this league, and every time you do, you leave one of your teammates hanging out to dry. Me in particular. Why should I give a hoot about you? Huh? Or anybody else out there? You want to talk about a waste, you the captain, right? Right. Captain's supposed to be the leader, right? Right. You got a job? I have a you job. You been doing your job? I've been doing my job. Then why don't you tell your white buddies to block for Rev better? Because they have not blocked for him or for Plug Nickel, and you know it. Nobody plays, yourself included. I'm supposed to wear myself out for the team? What team? No. No, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to look out for myself, and I'm going to get mine. Man, I want to have commentary, but this is such a strong scene. That's the worst attitude I ever heard. Attitude reflect leadership, Captain. That's one of the thickest burdens. That is the best <laughs> mic drop line. <laughs> so you picked this scene. Why does this scene speak to you so strongly? I think it's just, like, honest conversation. Like, it's, like, two people, like, finally expressing their concerns with each other. And uh, Gary Bertier is actually, you can kind of see it in his eyes. He's like, oh, you're right. Like, I have these flaws. So I, I just think he's, he's, he's starting to understand, okay, I can step it up. I understand wh why you feel this way. And this is a very critical moment. I mean, this is where their relationship starts to transition. Well, and that makes me think, I mean, I, so I'm a therapist and I work a lot with couples, but also just with people in relationships, period. And a lot of people are conflict avoidant. They don't want to have what they're afraid is going to be an ugly, unproductive com or explosive conversation. So they just bury it and they stuff it and then things don't get resolved. Mm -hmm. And here we've got such a, a brilliant example of that's actually, conflict is healthy. I like to say that if you're growing a relationship garden, conflict is like manure. It stinks and nobody likes it, but it's necessary for growth, mm -hmm. right? And so they're having this conflict, but it's in the open. And even though they get passionate, neither of them goes so far as to lose control or to just be angry. Like they're actually stating their case and hearing each other and it's registering. Well, and they're, they're not resorting to character attacks, right? They're not, you're a bad person right. because of this. They're just saying, look, it's this about is the what issue. you're doing wrong. Yeah, it's about the issue. It's not It's not an attack on the character. Yeah. And I do love, the, on, the only thing that makes this film step away a little bit from feeling completely realistic to me is that it's a PG Disney film, so he's like, Why should I give a hoot about you? I frankly think we should bring it back. Yeah. Yeah, more hoots. I don't give a hoot. I don't give <laughs> People should give more hoots, or not give them. <laughs> As they see fit. Yeah, up to them. <laughs> up to them. <laughs> You know, choose your own adventure. That's our next one. Let them in. Get the Listen. ref once, just one time. I swear to God, I'm gonna hit you so hard by the time you come to. Ooh, boy, you're gonna need a new haircut. You understand me? Let's <laughs> 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 <This> play, <laughs> fellas. Run the ball, let's run it again. I think I was that guy when I played lacrosse and rugby, and now I regret it. I regret it deeply. You talk trash and sound kind of silly? All the time. Oh, me. You all right, Big Petey? You all right? You really stuck him, Campbell. Yeah, I love me a little contact, Petey. This is left side. <laughs> Strong side. Left side. Strong side. Left side. Strong side. Left side. Strong side. Never underestimate the power of vaguely homoerotic bonding. <laughs> the very words Alan and I live by on this show. So, um... <laughs> awesome. Oh, gosh dang it. I spat across the room. <laughs> what I noticed in the previous scene is, you know, I'm gonna look out for me and mine, right? I mean, there's there's a sort of tribalism going on. And we when we talk about race and we talk about racism, you know, there is a there is a component of of racial superiority. One group is above another. There is there is a component of um, having of not liking the other. But for a lot of people who consider themselves decent people and not racist, what it really looks like is I'm looking out for me and mine. What I loved is that in the it ended with the mic drop of attitude reflects leadership, and then you have the two obvious leaders mm -hmm. of each tribe, right? Yeah. And the moment that they become friends or be they show unity to the rest of their tribe, instantly the entire team follows suit. Yeah. Uh, um, so it, it was right. Like it just kind of foreshadowed what, what could happen and, and then they did it. Um, also, I feel like it took a lot of humility for Gary Bertier, especially in this time. Because, I mean, you gotta think about it, like for his entire life, what, he's probably 16, 17 years old, his entire life, white people have been superior. Like, the, it's the culture of America, right? And like, yep. we have 
better things, of course. Like, I'm white, you're black. That's just the way it is. I am just happen to be better than you. Yeah. And he had to really humble himself to the point where you can see how shocked Julius is the first time that he shows, hey, we're in this together. He's like, what's happening? <laughs> I, this like, has wait, never happened in, fight with me? in like, my entire life. Where, you know, it's like, is, yeah, is, are you picking a fight? That's the only expect, like, this is the only thing I could relate this to, but. Yeah, and then um, he sees it's something different. Yeah, it's, hey, this is love. And he responds back with love. And then, guess what? The entire team shifts for the rest of it. Even, I mean, even in the music, you can just hear it the very next scene. Like, Yeah. But you talk about that, that he, he was looking like, is, I'm, is a fight being picked with me? And he realizes, no, this is love. On the subject of race or on any sort of prejudice or bias, love is what changes hearts. Love is what changes minds. We start to see a shared humanity, and that's what we connect with. I really wish, like, I, I like, granted, I, I have my opinions, but I, I also try, even with people who have these different, people who have different opinions about Trump or Biden or Blue Lives Matter or Black Lives Matter, I, I, I do try to, like, okay, let me just, like, put myself in their shoes um, and I, and I, and I feel like that that's the only way for me to healthily, like, like live my life or else I'm going to be very, very angry yeah. all the time. That's my secret, cat. This is why I'm angry all the time. <laughs> I never listen. I'm always angry. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but like, like I said in the beginning of this thing, like I re I bet you if you took all these people and you just put them in and they had to room together and they had to like they had to learn things about each other and they had to depend on each other even though they had different opinions like they would start to what's the word it's like a Venn diagram it would start to kind of push more you know? yeah there'd be more overlap yeah it'd be more overlap because there's more understanding yeah um but yeah yeah now coach boone had it figured out and I, I should add this is my wife's favorite movie alan we joke he's my movie wife because i can geek out about movies with him yeah my wife there are movies she likes but she's not a big movie person yeah and coach boone that's how she parents and she has said to our kids and i kid you not they've asked for a drink of water and she said water, water is for cowards water makes you weak Water is for washing blood off that uniform, and you don't get no blood on my uniform. Boy, you must be outside your mind. And my son just, like, stares at her, and then she's like, here's your water. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where, where, where do we go with this? Where do we go from there? <laughs> but the main thing that that scene really brings up is our sponsor, Lisa's Passion for Popcorn. Mm -hmm. Today, for uh, Remember the Titans, gave us white chocolate flavor. Where we blend... That's actually my karaoke stage name. Delicious. Lisa's Passion for Popcorn. Lisa's Passion for Popcorn.com. They deliver. Yeah. They sponsor our show. That's actually my favorite flavor. Hey, Mr. Fisher. So, it's Coach it's Yost at this point has been told. Off, coach, if you want to stay in this game. They're going to throw the game for him so that he can get the Hall of Fame. He can become the head coach. <laughs> I've got holding on 78 white. What are you, are you trying to cheat my boys out the game? Oh, come on, what was that? Very young Hayden Panettiere. What are you doing? That was a hold? Oh, come save on. Save the cheerleader, save the world. <laughs> hey, this! I really didn't appreciate this when this movie came out. You know, I was 19 years old. I know all about it, Titus. What are you talking about, Bill? You call this game fair, or I'll go to the papers. I don't care if I go down with you. But before God, I swear I'll see every last one of you thrown in jail. You dig your own grave. Ethan, on me! Courage that it takes okay, to potentially you torpedo strong. your own career. And everyone around you, you who's telling you one thing and you go, no, I know what's right, and that's not what you're saying. Yeah. Forget about him. Alan, you're in. Come on. All right. Well, and if it doesn't require discomfort or even sacrifice, then another yard. You blitz all night. And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. Whoa!
I mean, Denzel deservedly gets a lot of accolades for his role here, but Will Patton is fantastic in this movie as well. Without Will Patton, there's no foil for Denzel, and it doesn't, it, it wouldn't land nearly as hard. Yeah. You know, we're talking about doing the right thing even when it's the hard thing. I'd say for me, this is like a very classic example or an example of using your privilege to to help someone yep. even you know in in spite of wh how, what anyone's going to think of you or even of your your own like career your own life like this is very very selfless like he could have gone right back on track of his life you know what i mean he could have yeah. gone gotten the hall of fame he could have gotten the coaching job lived very very comfortably it takes a lot to leave that comfortability to go and probably a lot of people who don't agree with you stand up for something else. And I think that he, he sacrificed, he was willing to sacrifice his whole life to do the right thing because he realized it was the right thing. Yeah, because you gotta live with yourself no matter yeah. what you choose, Yeah. right? Yeah. From a filmmaking standpoint, this movie does have a really strong script. It's a very good script. And the performances are really strong. And this movie, shows you that everything else that's in movies is kind of window dressing. It's nice, but this movie is a very straightforward, almost paint by numbers, the way it's shot, the way it's cut. The action is fine. Like, it feels like football. It, it's not the best football that's ever been put on screen. That's true. But it's, it's fine. There's it actually, serves its a, purpose. There's a, actually a couple, like... There's a couple that are kind of really weak. bad. Like, like is like he's not even running. Like he's like, oh yeah, yeah. it's like a fake run. Like well, it's, it's very obvious. It's yeah. like yeah, it looks like that. The one dude's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie proves that if you have a great script and you have a good cast, uh, and and a really good score, by the way, I'll say that the yeah. the film score, the music, yeah, really the music good. is is yeah, great. The needle drops yeah. are great, and the the orchestral score that underscores things is really great. I mean, it's all, everything else is just kind of getting out of the way. You boys are doing all that you can do. Anybody can see that. Win or lose, we're going to walk out of this stadium tonight with our heads held high. Do your best. That's all anybody can ask for. No, it ain't, Coach. In all due respect, uh, you demanded more of us. You demanded perfection. Now, I ain't saying that I'm perfect, because I'm not. And I ain't going to never be. None of us are. But we have won every single game we have played till now. So this team is perfect. We stepped out on that field that way tonight. And uh, if it's all the same to you, Coach Boone, that's how we want to leave it. You've taught this city how to trust the soul of a man rather than the look of him. And I guess it's about time I joined the club. Herman, I sure could use your help. Ed Henry's kicking my ass out. Let's go, it's out time, everybody in. Out time, out time, out time. Titans on three. One, two, three, Titans! I love that moment of the student becoming the master. You know, Julius taking what he's learned from Coach Boone and giving it right back to him. Yeah. And then all the, all the other little moments of sacrifice. Coach Yost, you know, giving up at the at the beginning of the movie, he's like, "I run the defense as a part of my team strategy." He asks Coach Boone for help. So, if you think about it, all this humility had to happen in order for the game to win. If Coach Yost didn't uh, give up defense to Coach Boone, then they probably, you know, they wouldn't be in the position to win. So it just shows you, like, hey, like when you're thinking for the betterment of like the society or the team you know like and you can see and, and you you go through life with humility you know the better result usually happens yeah. well and I think humility is like we don't grow without it we don't get better we don't heal we don't unite pride you know the reason there's a reason that's the phrase pride goeth before the fall right there's there's a type of righteous or good pride that comes from hanging your hat on a job well done you know, and, and feeling that sense of accomplishment. But there's another sense of pride that says, I'm innately superior or better, uh, and my ideas are the only ones worth listening to. And it comes from a place of insecurity. It comes from a place of fear, where we need to shut other people down so that we can be the big dog and be on top. 
And you're right. I'd, I'd never, James, I'd never thought about that before. You know, I, I looked at a lot of themes from Remember the Titans, but it is at its core a story of humility, of people growing in humility, and that's where they get their unity, and that's where they get their strength. It is the greatest movie that's ever been made, in my <laughs> opinion. It, I really think that. You know, America needs to Remember the Titans. I think literally everybody I know could stand to rewatch. It would be good for them, good for their soul. We want to thank James for joining us today and sharing his favorite movie and how it changed him. Alan, what do we got for the fine folks at home? Well, if you would like to watch Remember the Titans, you can rent or buy it using the link below. It's also on Disney Plus, if you're a member of that. Uh, and if you would like to have a 15 minute consultation with Jonathan, our fine therapist over here, uh, there's a link below for that as well. We're gonna drop down there as well uh, links for James's social so you can follow him and see what he's up to. Uh, he's very creative, very talented, and Alan and I are both huge fans, which is why he's on the show. You can also catch us on social media. At therapy underscore cinema on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook. So until next time, left side! Strong side! Left side! Strong side! Left side! Strong side! And watch movies. <laughs> I really love James, like, not even watching them. <laughs> what you did with those boys. You were the right man for the job, coach. Your Hall of Fame in my book. Yeah!